the bidding starts 15, 16, 17 grand. I'm like top bidder. I'm about to win it for 17 grand. What's up, JR Garage? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Scottsdale, Arizona. Now, I would normally say beautiful sunny Arizona or something, but today is a very dreary, rainy day. Rain, I know in Arizona, like this rarely happens. That's a bummer because I was gonna take the McLaren or maybe the Maserati or one of the other cars out. We're taking them all through performance today, but we have a fun, quick video in store for you guys today. A little bit of an update video on some past cars we've been bidding on, Post Malone's Rolls Royce, um, as well as some other cars that I've never told you guys about, and as well as a car that may be joining, well not maybe, is joining the family here next video. I'm going to give you guys some hints and see if you can guess what it is. But anyway, like the title suggests, there's about... I think it was five cars I've bid on in the past week, which is crazy. As you guys know, I keep a very sharp eye on exotics and various sports cars going to auction. Whether they've been crashed or just have some other issue, which is the reason they got sent to auction, um, I definitely like keeping a close eye on them and seeing if there's good deals to be had. And for some reason in the past week, there have been a lot of cars that have come up, five of which I bid on, and I'm gonna tell you guys how they all panned out. So starting with the biggest and baddest one of the five, 2016 McLaren 675 LT. If you guys know cars, you would know that this is one of the most beautiful cars ever released. You would know it's an absolute track monster, and you know it is a super rare limited production McLaren. It's one of 500 coupes. So you rarely see these things come up for auction. So when I saw this one, I was like, no way. And while the damage is pretty extensive, I'll be showing some pictures. I mean, you got rear end damage with the wheel completely bent out of a line. I don't know what exactly happened there. I didn't get the chance to see this car in person. So this is all off the photos. And as you can see in the front, there is some very heavy damage. Frame rails, both fenders, the front bumper. And the thing is, a lot of these parts are not interchangeable with 12 Cs and 650s. So getting these parts I mean, there's very few 675 LT parts cars out there. So getting parts, you'd have to buy them brand new from McLaren most likely, which would cost a small fortune. I mean, in my mind, I, I was adding up some things. I think just in the parts alone, you could be like 50 to 75 grand. Man, so that's just parts. And then you gotta buy the car too. And then being that it's a collector's car, the value after the rebuild would be very heavily diminished. So it had some things going for it, but it had a lot of cons as well. So at the end of the day, we did not end up winning the bid. Would have been a super cool project to have on the channel, especially after we finished our 12C McLaren and that rebuild went perfectly. Um, would have been cool to have a second McLaren, but didn't end up winning that. So another car that I am super bummed out, the closest we got to winning a car was with this one, the 2012 Cayenne Turbo. Now this one has very minimal damage. I mean, you're talking like a hood, maybe front bumper, super clean car, really nice options. Those used trade for in like the 30s, mid 30s. So I really wanted to be like sub 20 grand on the car. And it was only like 15 grand the night before bidding started. So I'm like, bet, I'm gonna win this one. It's gonna be all good. The bidding starts 15, 16, 17 grand. I'm like top bidder. I'm about to win it for 17 grand. And then out of nowhere pops up a Nigerian bidder, literally bidding from Nigeria on the live auction. And he takes me all the way up to like 19,800, you know, my max. And I would have had to bid well over 20 just for the next bid and who knows when he would have stopped. So I just had to stop. You know, it's all about controlling your emotions. You don't want to let your emotions get involved when you're bidding. So you got to be careful of that. So we ended, didn't end up winning it. We were back one, one bid away, one bid away, potentially like $200 away from winning that car. That would have been so cool. We would have gotten it, like done some exhaust mods and tuned it. I mean, those things are monsters. <laughs> Okay, so car number three. Once again, this would have been super cool had we won it, but uh, anyway, I was browsing Audi R8s. One of them, while yes, had some pretty extensive damage, I was flipping through the pictures, and when it got to the engine bay shot, I saw twin turp skis. So I was like, no way, it's a twin turbo V10 Audi R8. This thing is so cool. And the car I think made like 770 uh, at the crank horsepower. So 
that's a lot of power. So I really wanted this thing, but once again, it was like in Minnesota and I'm here in Arizona, so I couldn't check it out in person. You know, with all the snow up there that they've been getting, like did snow sneak in through the windows that appeared to be like some of them are, were cracked or missing. So it's like too many, too many unknowns, too many red flags. So we didn't end up winning that one. I think it went for $36,000, which if that car ran and everything and the damage wasn't as bad as the pictures looked, then whoever bought that car, man, they are gonna have a neat project on their hands. So bummer. Um, car number four, also an Audi R8 actually. Uh, some rear end damage. This one was a V10, but not twin turbo. Had, had some rear end damage, which uh, I think he hit a curb. It bent the rear wheel out of the line. So not a ton of damage, but the windows were down. So I think for some reason the battery was dead. And when it came, when it got to the yard, the battery, of course, I guess they didn't charge it and stuff. Oftentimes they don't mess with any of that stuff. So uh, it listed as a would not start, does not run because of course they didn't charge the battery. So it wouldn't start. And I think the windows were left down and they just got some pretty significant rain. So I'm sure water got in the interior of that car. So once again, I just didn't want to mess with it. Didn't want to pay a lot of money for something I couldn't see in person and couldn't confirm whether it was a clean car or not. So I had to let that one go. So no Audi R8s today. Oh, and one other thing before I forget. So Christian is still back home on the East Coast at the other warehouse. Um, he has been hard at work on the Bentley, the E46, and the other uh, E93 M3. And some super exciting news with the Bentley. He's going to update you in two videos but I'll give you guys a little sneak peek today the Bentley started more on that and a whole explanation of what's going on still stuff needs to be done but he figured out what was the issue needs working with the uh, our local Bentley dealership and hopefully fingers crossed it will be on the road soon or working and driving soon so that's huge news coming the video after next and car number five just sold a couple days ago, 2012 Ferrari California. This one was super well optioned. Super interesting car in that it wasn't in any sort of collision, but it was actually reported as fire damage because it was in a garage that caught on fire, but apparently the car wasn't touched. So it got me super intrigued because it's like a run and drive car that's apparently untouched and undamaged. Once again, I only saw it the day before the auction, so I wasn't able to fly out and see it in person, which is something we really strive to do, seeing the car in person, knowing that's a clean car before you bid on it. Because if you bid on it and the car has some hidden issues and you end up winning the bid, there's nothing you can do to get out of it. You know, pretty high risk if you don't see the car. It sold for $77,000 plus buyer's premium and all that stuff. And then once you add on shipping and that kind of stuff and that car was sitting at that yard for I think a few months before the sale which is another kind of red flag it was like four or five months actually before the sale even happened it's just been sitting there so California is oftentimes slow with their title transfers and everything so it takes a while for cars to actually go to auction but five months is like a really long time so that was another red flag and I just don't like red flags when bidding on cars there's so many there are thousands ten hundreds of thousands of wrecked cars out there at any given one time so you really have to be picky and very choosy when it comes to bidding on these cars. And like we have been in the past, and especially because we're not some huge shop, it's just Christian and I can only do, you know, one at a time, two at a time. So we don't want to end up bidding and buying the wrong car. So we have to be very picky. So any of those five cars would have been super neat and a really cool project. Didn't end up winning any of those five, but we did end up winning one car that will be coming at you guys next video but I want you guys to comment down below what you think it is. I'm not gonna give you a ton of hints. Kinda want this to be more of a surprise, but it's a vehicle we've been promising we'd be getting for like over a year now, and finally we got it. Um, so that's kinda one hint. And the other hint is it has more torque than any of those previous five cars I just listed that we bid on. The LT, the Twin Turbo R8, all that stuff. It has more torque than all of them. So if that gives you another hint. So comment down below what you think. I'll be dropping a couple more hints on our Instagram at JR Garage. So follow us there if you're not already. And uh, I'm sure we'll pick a couple people who guess it correctly for a piece of JR Garage merch or a shirt or something like that if you guys get it. So comment down below. But what do you guys think about those five cars? Should we have bid higher? You know, you win some, you lose some. We lost these, but we win. We won the one car, which is coming next video. And we're super pumped for that. Oh, and by the way, there's literally a Rolls Royce um, right in front of me now. So that reminds me 
to mention uh, Post Malone's car. So a ton of you guys have been asking like, so did you end up bidding on it, whatnot? And the video, you guys, like hundreds of thousands of people watched that video. I'm glad you all liked it, but so many of you were like, half of you were like, yes, get it, that's so cool. You can sell it back to him and you can be friends with him once you tell him you have his old car. And then half of you were like, no, that's way too much work to get that back. Um, going again. So when you think about it guys for 120 grand in its wrecked state plus tens of thousands of dollars in parts alone Plus all the labor and work and airbags and just everything that, need, that needs to be done to that car At the end of the day, it just wasn't worth it for us We didn't see a profit in the end which is important when you when you're buying something you want to make sure you can make money on it Once you're all said and done. So we decided to pass on it I think it did end up selling if I'm not mistaken. I think like 113 grand um, so once again, it would have been super cool, but for 113 grand plus all the parts, we could have a lot of other project cars, which is I think the route we are going to take. So I hope you guys are okay with that. And one last thing before I go here, definitely comment down below or let me know if you guys want some more technical or insightful videos when it comes to actually like bidding on wrecked cars because there is so much you need to know. I mean, it's far different from just maybe flipping clean title cars, for example. When you're talking about salvage cars, rebuild cars, history cars, you have to be extremely careful. For example, there are so many cars that are what I call like doctored up, like they are shady cars that you want, you don't want to touch with a hundred foot pole. For example, yesterday I found a 2015 Audi R8, like beautiful, like red car. I'm like, this is sick. And it looks like it's very minimal damage, yet it still has a salvage title. So when everything's perfect, but a salvage title and it's at auction, that's immediately a red flag. And when it's not for sale by an insurance company and it's just a third party, all perfect looking, that's another red flag. So I did some more digging into it and I found that it previously sold a few months back and this is how it looked when it sold. So most likely deep down that car is a nightmare. We're probably trying to find a bidder that doesn't know the real history of that car. That's just one for example, but I see it literally every single day and for one amazing awesome car that like we want to bid on there's probably 50 or 100 really bad cars that you want to stay away from so a lot to know but i talk about a bunch of things you should know in videos but comment down below if you want more videos or if you guys want to check out flipping wheels our video lesson library we talk about it there as well so a bunch of good information to know um, before you start bidding on these previously crashed cars so anyway guys that's it for this video i'm gonna go grab some tacos from Del Taco. It's Taco Tuesday, three pack for a buck 29. That's 43 cents a taco. You can't lose at that. And if I'm saving money on food, that gives me more money to bid on wrecked cars that you guys want for the channel. So I'll see you guys next video. I'll see you guys with the new vehicle, I should say. May or may not be a car, truck, I don't know, vehicle. Cool. See you guys tomorrow. Hi there. Can I have 21 tacos? Yeah.